So I'm here today, we're here today, uh, we're talking about restoration. And you see a car behind me and you also see Kurt and Lauren Miller who are with me and they have done the work on this car. So Kurt, what car are we looking at? Not that I don't know, I'm a car aficionado. No, I'm not. <laughs> what is it again? What is it again? <laughs> what is no, the car? No, it's a 1957 Chevy 210. It's a 57 yeah. Chevy 210. Two, two door, hard top. That has meaning for many people probably. Yeah. That is so good. Code name, the Black Mongoose. The Black Mongoose? Yeah. It's terrifying. I know. Nice. <laughs> it is a beautiful piece of work. Uh, so the two of you, you did this together and it's Father's Day, so it's really appropriate that we're actually having this conversation. It worked out really well. So for the two of you, why? Why restore the car? What was it about it that just the two of you said, we're going to do this? Well, dad had the car since 2004. He bought it from Janssen Chevrolet. That's not a plug or anything. Not a plug for <laughs> Janssen Chevrolet. <laughs> um, <laughs> fine, pleasant bunch over so, there. So yeah, I, so it had some sentimental value because he had the car for a number of years. And then I wanted to have a car that was, like I said, competitive at World of Wheels, one car. So I sold three cars and start, kept one motor, which is in there. And we started the restoration process. Dad? You got yeah. Well, I said before, serendipity is the word I use, that you start with a car and then because you have the car, then you start to fix the car and then you go on from there to the next step and then you find that your son's really interested in it and so there's another step and then you, then you see what his dream is and that's another step and then you eventually you go to there. Ludicrous. Ludicrous. <laughs> so it's been many years this pro this process has just been over the years and uh, you so showed me pictures of the before pictures and how you totally tore this thing apart and rebuilt it, uh, modified it to what you see here today. Uh, what was your biggest challenge as you did something like this, this project? Biggest challenge? Putting up with each other or no? No, no, no. we, we no, that, the, the father-son part's good. No, people told us, you, know, you guys are gonna get grumpy with each other and we never got grumpy one time. Nope. So good. It was... Uh, not one time? Not one time. No, but I will say, you know what? The hardest part was doing things uh, multiple times. Yes. Like when you'd, you'd think it was going to get done right and then it wouldn't be quite right. And then you have to redo it. Or here, I'll give you a, this is a really good example. We had the center console completely finished. Darren Nickel did it. It was in the car and then it went, had to go back to the paint shop to get the hood installed and someone we don't know who put a cigarette burn into the brand new upholstery so out comes the console take all that work apart and redo it all and it's that is sickening so that's the hardest part and those things happen little things like that happen all the way along yeah absolutely you doing things twice and three times because you wanted to be exacting well, and that's what you can see. You guys have taken the time to be meticulous about everything and every detail. Uh, so to finish off, what's, what's been the biggest blessing, the biggest reward out of doing this project? Uh, time together, yeah. time with friends. Like I had a lot of friends that worked on the car that would, like last night we were doing a few things. So yeah, they came over, you're up till midnight. It's actually one of my friends said after this whole COVID thing, he sent me a text, he said, we need to get through this and do something on your car because I'm, I'm missing out on a part of life that I enjoy, he said. Yeah, and like I said before, Kurt and I talked, either text or talk nearly every morning. Last winter, most of the winter, we had text or talked every morning. And then when the car was done, we didn't have a necessity to talk, so we talked less. I thought, one day I said, Kurt, we don't talk anymore. But we're not going to do another car. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what I was going to suggest. You need... No. no. <laughs> You're in the restoration business. Once. No. Yeah, it was a one-time one, one deal. One to get a car to that. Yeah. And you nailed it. I want to thank you for your time. I want to thank you for letting us use your car for the shot and just yeah. for the imagery and the, the message of, of restoration. And 
It's great to see, and we're gonna fire it up. And Kurt's gonna let me take it for a drive. <laughs> After the world of wheels. After if, the world of wheels, happens, which is next drive. year. Next year. <laughs> Thanks a lot. But you know, it is a lot like like the problems and joys that you get as you live your life. That was that's what was going on when we were doing that uh, that car. Yeah. Do you want to get close for this, or? I, I got. No, you won't have to. Got it. It's gonna get loud. <laughs> <laughs>